Hey there, it's uh, Jamal at Cooper Road Mini, and uh, what we got here is a chance to show, start to finish, the installation of one of these Hilo uh, spring kits. The new owner of, yes, yes, uh, our uh, update here real quick, the uh, 1970 minivan has a new owner, and uh, it's a funny thing, but uh, uh, the gentleman was uh, looking at Mini Mania's website and uh, saw me in a video that's uh, still up there talking about uh, assembling these subframes with some of these very components over here. And he thought, ah, uh, it's a very elegant looking setup that allows for adjustability of height. And with the way this minivan is set up, uh, there was room to lower uh, for even more of that uh, crazy uh, too damn small effect that you get when you park this next to say a Prius. You know, I, I endeavor to show these things the way uh, an average equipped hobbyist would. I have a good friend with a lift and you know a lot of these things you see on YouTube the professionals roll in and stuff zip 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 zip. Yeah, there's value in that but uh, you know I, th I like to kind of work uh, the way a lot of people would. This is after all uh, something I enjoy. Uh, this is a hobby and I'm equipped with the way a lot of hobbyists are. However if you're a lift company <laughs> you see all these little cars I could stand a lift in here with my, I don't know, almost 12 foot ceiling that it would make parking them a little more efficient. This is a pretty good, pretty good size uh, uh, shop here. My main um, garage workshop. Yeah, my high school GTO takes up a good portion of it back there. Uh, my uh, project in waiting uh, series one Lotus Elan. Of course, my mini, this minivan heading off to its new home soon. There's the big update. Let's jump into this project. Uh, it's really the, the rear of these things don't ever be intimidated uh, on the minivans in particular the, the wagon types Here's the upper mounts for the shocks I've simply taken off uh, those nuts and bushings. Yes, I've used uh, the hydraulic jack to make a better room But again keeping things simple. I've got a pair of these wonderful mechanical screw jacks by hand here I can dial in a bit more lift Let me reach in here and see. Oh, yeah, see so that rear suspension is completely unloaded now. And then jack the car up and uh, hey, grab the shock bushings and such. Here's what falls out. Yeah, this is the stock trumpet, the end of the joint knuckle here. These are usually stuck in there and they're so cheap, it's inexcusable not to just put brand new ones unless they've just been replaced. These are less than five bucks. Um, this is the standard rubber spring setup. Of course, we're replacing all of this with Hilos and the red springs. Let's see if this side cooperates here. Just to quickly show the bits. See, when I jacked it up, you literally hear a little clunk as the these bits here lose their uh, compression. And literally, the trumpet then is just sitting here. It can be wobbled loose. We showed how the shock was removed from the inside. There's a bushing and a cup here to keep track of, of course. Now, all of these bits, either one at a time or everything fits out pretty easily. Usually the plastic cup will stay in the, uh, in the hole there. I was able to get the other side out without even removing, oh, there it goes, without even removing the wheels. The other side, I grabbed a hold of it and pried it out with a little pair of channel lock. This side here ended up peeling the outside of much of it. But, you know, they're just plastic. You drive a small chisel into it or something and pry it out of there. So here are the uh, new and old bits side by side for a quick comparison. You can see here, it's a pretty decent looking uh, rubber uh, cone spring. And of course, the, the trumpet looks like a trumpet. And I mentioned uh, being careful to take these little... Uh, plastic cup joint knuckles out. Uh, this one pulled out without much distortion. The other side I showed was in little bits. And so what we can try to do here, um, you can see that I've, I've pulled this uh, adjustable unit out such that these are about the same size uh, lengthwise. You can see the bits here, these just pull off. There's the joint knuckle piece, the extension, everything slips together pretty elegantly. Uh, pay attention when you're doing these, of course, these springs very, you know, obviously they're all red, but uh, they are uh, different in a subtle way. The uh, the coils are a smaller diameter for the feather light rear of these cars. Um, we showed the intact cup coming out. These are just 
A little bit of oil or grease so they're not totally dry. I verified that these have quality grease installed inside the joint, some of the new ones. Uh, pay attention that they are not dry going in and that will shorten their life. And so with everything pretty clean here, even without removing the wheel, you can see you can just reach in and start that. Short handle trusty bolt in here. Just tap it in until the sound of it. And you can see everything working in place. I'll position it such that I can slip the spring, the extension strut in, get the length about right, such that I can uh, have the shock hang it without anything falling out. And that should result in a, in a pretty uh, similar height to what the car had before, and then we can adjust it from there to our taste. Let me see if I can uh, reach in here and just adjust my shim lightly. And you can see again, I think the shock absorber is probably limiting some of our travel. I just wanna have enough room in here to reach in, get to the other side of my knuckle right there, and then just start installing bits. Trying to brighten up a dark area. You can see the rod sitting down here, the other end of which is uh, connected into that joint knuckle. Work it into its central hole. There we go. At this point, if you undo that great big adjustable bolt, it'll take up the slack. For this amount of wheel droop, it allows us to install the shock, and then the length of the shock prevents it from extending too far, at least if we don't want the car to sit too low. Now I've mentioned there's an issue with these before, like on our, my own 66 Cooper S there. This setup here, I've got the car running really low. When I raise the back of the car up, this stuff does unload. But you can see that it would take quite a bit for it to fall out of place or any of these uh, slip connections to come out. That essentially is the way this kit goes together. You put it together there, it doesn't fall out. You connect the shock, everything's held in. If these things come out of place when the car is raised up, um, you need to line them back up. Otherwise, yeah, you, you could easily break things. Let's see if we can back away here from our little viewpoint. And we can see that you know, I can lift on the wheel to the point where you know, that stuff tightens up and takes the load of the suspension. Um, and I'll do that with the shock connected. It'll, everything will be held in place till I lower the jack uh, and set the car on its own weight right there. I can't get enough light in here, but you can see that the big old crescent wrench. It's a little bit harder with the van, with the, with the longer wheelbase car, because of course the wheels are further in with, the, with my Cooper S. The wheel is kind of at the very back of the car. You can see here that even with weight on the car, without jacking the car, you've got room to get in here with a good size wrench. And it doesn't take a whole lot of adjustment because of the way this uh, suspension, of course, pivots and such. Not a lot of suspension movement for the available wheel travel. Take a look at how this would look quite a bit lower than stock. What I did here, I uh, finished just installing all the bits on the back. I set it to about a thumb. <laughs> I put it really low just to kind of see how it looks. 